Y'all ready to dive into a new message series? Love, intimacy, and dating. And yes, it is February, the month of love. But uh, as we're all thinking about that, um, it's not always a happy season for everybody. So I got to encourage you guys. Today's message and this whole series is not just for couples or married couples. It's for everyone. So singles, hold in there. Embrace your singleness. There's going to be um, some really great content that we're going to learn from Scripture that can be life-changing and relationship um, uh, just changing for you guys. Just really help you guys to dig in deep to what Scripture says so that you guys can have blessed relationships. None of us want relationships that are toxic or frustrating. And let's be honest, in our families of origin, how many of you have conflict in your families sometime? You raise your hand. It's okay. Every one of you, and if you didn't raise your hand, you lied in church. And I'm going to pray for you today, okay? Yeah, we all got conflict, right? But we want to bring in blessing. And I find that when we do things God's way, it actually changes the nature of our lives and our relationships. So again, this message is going to be chock full of uh, just biblical wisdom and truth. And what we're going to dive into today is really the foundation that is below all the skills. So many of us, we have that TikTok and Instagram mentality that's about eight seconds of attention span, right? So, which is actually less than a goldfish. Did y'all know that? Goldfish is 10 seconds. The average uh, person who was on TikTok for over an hour every day has an eight second attention span, okay? So we, we got to realize that uh, something's wrong with the way we're consuming uh, media. But uh, God has something so deep for you guys today that uh, I think is going to shift your perspective. And you know, that, that fast food mentality of I want that content, tell me what to do so I can fix it and I'm going to do it and I just need skills. Guys, it's so much deeper than skills. Because the reality is you can give 10 people the same skills and they're all going to have different results and we have to understand why. It's a foundational issue. So we will get to the skills of relationships in the coming weeks, but today what we're going to talk about is the foundation of relationships, the foundation that makes those skills work. And I believe that God wants to call some of us into alignment. Some of us have strayed in relationships. Uh, some of us feel a little distant from relationships in our lives. Some of us feel distant from God. And if you want to bring blessing back into your life, we have to figure out how to bridge the gap, how to get close again, how to invest. Remember the devil's favorite kind of Christian is an isolated believer because you got no input in your life. You have no encouragement in your life. You have nobody to walk with you as the life becomes heavy. So we want to open up our hearts. And I want to invite you right now. Let's pray that the Holy Spirit helps us to open our hearts because I believe God wants to give you more than inspiration today. I believe that God wants to do something in you, to you, and through you so that you can live a life of blessing. Do you guys want that? Yes. Amen. All right, let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Jesus. Lord God, would you uh, just... Fill us, Holy Spirit, with what we need, Lord God. Each of us find ourselves in different places and all of our relationships, Lord God. But what we all have in common is that uh, sometimes they get a little dysfunctional. Would you help us, Lord God, to be agents of change, to bring blessing and to make the best use of time that you've given us? Because all of our relationships are on time clocks. So we just uh, lean into you this morning in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So let's open up our context of James chapter 4, verse 13 to 17. This is what it says. Now listen, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go to this city or that, spend a year here, carry on business and make money. Why do not even know what will happen tomorrow? You don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist. Some versions say you are a vapor that appears for a little while and then it vanishes. So we're in this life here on earth for just a little bit of time. We don't all know how much time we have. We don't know how much time people in our lives have. And we have to recognize that we are, we are all on this clock and you can't begin to value relationships or even your walk with God very often until you learn to value the time that he's entrusted to each of us. So scripture goes on. It says this, you are a mist or a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes, all such boasting is evil. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. It is sin for them. So, so I recognize the power of relationships actually when I got married. You see, we all, we all have BC years. You know what the BC years, right? Before Christ, right? So it's before I became a follower of Jesus. I had this certain perspective of relationships and it's the same perspective all of us have. We all live in the same world and there's a philosophy that, that literally is in contradiction or at war with the truth of scripture. And, and God says relationships are one thing and the world says it's another. And I'm gonna tell you, when Joe Marie and I started dating, what did I love about Joe Marie? I thought, man, I love that she makes me laugh. She makes me smile. She makes me feel butterflies in my belly. And she did, right? And that, man, she's just so wonderful and all these things. And what they all had in common, all these great appraisals, all these things I loved about her was that they were all really about me. Like I didn't really even scratch the surface of who is she apart from me? What do I love about her that has nothing to do with me? 
And see, this world that we live in tells you that relationships, that you should be in them, follow your heart. And what we do is we follow our heart and we're like, oh, she's so beautiful or he's so good looking. They make it feel magical. And right, like, like when you're dating, it's like blind. But when you get marriage, married, marriage reveals all things, right? And then you're like, yeah, this person doesn't make me feel that way anymore. So then what does the world tell you? Go find a new partner. And when we, when we live like the world says, we actually go relationship to relationship to relationship, really just chasing the wind, chasing this idea, this false idea that they are the source of my happiness, my joy, my contentment. Here's a truth bomb. Say bomb. Here's a truth bomb. Nobody but God is a source of your validation and affirmation, right? Because here's the deal. I'm broken as a person. We all are. I can't affirm and validate myself. Something's missing in me. That's why we look to others. And don't judge me because y'all feel the same way. And then we look toward other broken people who can't validate and affirm themselves. They can't even truly love themselves. And we expect them to do it for us. You know what I realized when I got married? Now I went from BC years to like my, my walking with Jesus. And marriage was a powerful, powerful discipleship tool in my life. Now, this message is not about marriage. I'm just giving you an illustration here. It's actually about all of us and all of our relationships because all relationships that are in Christ and centered on God will do the same thing in your life. But I noticed and I started to realize how selfish I was. I never understood the depth of my selfishness until I got married because my wife said, you are so selfish. And I was like, no, I'm not. You get defensive. And so one day I humbled myself. And, and once I humbled myself, I actually invited God in and I started to change. My wife would tell me, you're too preoccupied. Spend a little more time at home, a little more focus on our relationship. We used to date and have fun, right? This is like year number two and three, right? And she's like, we don't kind of do that anymore. I feel like you take me for granted, right? So then I started to humble myself and I realized, you know what? I am selfish. I do get preoccupied. God, what's wrong with me? So then I started to invest more into the relationship and what happened? It got better. It got healthier. Here's a truth bomb for you. If somebody in your life tells you you're hurting them, believe them. Believe them. Somebody says, I feel disrespected by you. Believe them. If somebody says they feel put down by you, believe them. If you get defensive, understand you've showed your hand. It's actually admitting you're doing it, but you're reluctant to change. It was actually a powerful tool God used in my life. And, and we see this tool really crop up at the very beginning of the story in Genesis. Genesis chapter 2, 18, God looked at man. He said, it's not good that man should be alone. I will make for him a suitable helper. It's interesting, the word helper. How could Adam need help? What was he missing? And yet he was walking in the garden with God. The reality is there was no deficit in Adam because all of his hope, all of his joy, all of his contentment was never in the woman God would create for him. It was always directly in his relationship with God. So if you're a follower of Jesus today, you really wanna lean into this. If you're a spiritual seeker, this is something you probably wanna know because it's truth. Your validation, your hope, your purpose, your, 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 your joy, your happiness in life. If it's not found in God, you will find it nowhere else. No one else is a source of that in your life. And I had to realize that. So what was Eve's purpose? Helper, somebody that God would use as a vessel in his life to help him walk, to fulfill God's purpose for his life. This is why scripture says, iron sharpens iron as one brother sharpens another. That a cord of three strands is not easily broken. How, how could one stumble if they walk together? The reality is if, if a man is overcome, he'll be overcome alone by an enemy or an adversary unless there's a brother. So the reality that we need to lean into is God ordained Christ-centered relationships to be a tool of discipleship and blessing into your life. And some of us have been hurt by people and we push relationships away. Why? Because we project. Oh, I got hurt by him or her in my life and I learned not to trust. Because every time I told somebody something, they stabbed me in the back. You ever get stabbed in the back? Felt great, right? No, nobody likes that. And then we grab that and we're like, well, I'm not gonna trust anybody, any of you, because they hurt me, so I don't trust you. It's called projection. We grab what happened in the past, we project it forward, and we do violence to our own souls. They are paying the price for their sins. And you pay the price because you never heal. And what I actually keep away from myself is relationship, love, like connection, companionship. And what I invite into my life is loneliness and isolation. You see, if you're struggling with loneliness and isolation, the answer isn't always, no one likes me. Look at all of them. Sometimes the finger's gotta get pointed inward and we gotta be able to say, what am I doing in my life that's keeping people at bay? Others, this is true for all of us, this is gonna relate to everybody. We're all too busy. God created you for a life you're too busy for. 
God created you for relationships you are too busy for. And at the altar of busyness, we sacrifice purpose. At the altar of busyness, we sacrifice relationships. At the altar of busyness, I have guilt and shame about, I should spend more time with my kids, your husband, your wife, my in-laws, my outlaws, my friends. Like, I don't know my friends anymore because I'm too busy. I feel compelled, like I want to serve God. But God, you'll understand, I'm too busy. And yet God is telling you, I've created you in Christ Jesus to do good works, which I've created for you in advance. That means God's got a plan and a purpose for all of your lives. And when we're too busy, we never fulfill that. And we live life wanting and hoping and wanting to be part of something greater and bigger than ourselves. We want to be part of relationship and we feel completely overwhelmed at life. And then the outcome of feeling overwhelmed, you would think would drive us toward relationship, but it doesn't. It actually further causes us to isolate. And then we spend our time with time suckers. You know what time suckers are, right? It's three hours on TikTok and Instagram. Time suckers is rather than relationship, I'm just going to listen to audiobooks all the time. These, are some, these aren't bad things, but it's a condition of the heart. I, I settle for what's good at the expense of what's great. I settle for good at the expense of greatness in my marriage, with greatness with my kids, with my church family, with my community. And it costs us something. And God is asking you, would you reprioritize so that you could have healthy relationships? You're the secret to healthy relationships in your life. What if I told you, you only had an hour left to live? Like this hourglass represents your time. Like, Think about that. When I came in this morning, somebody saw this on our team, on the setup team. And they're like, Pastor, do you have that hourglass to hold you accountable for how long you're going to preach? I laughed and I said, no, I would need two or three for that. Keep you guys here for a while. But, but that hourglass, it represents our life. And, and, and we got to realize time is finite. None of you are guaranteed tomorrow. That's what scripture says. We have to live every day as if it was our very last day. But if you knew you only had one hour left, where would you go? Where would you be right now if you only had one hour left? How would you live your life different? How would that one hour that you have left, and I know you guys are like, Pastor, why are you repeating that? Time is running out. Like, what would you do? Who would you go to? Who would you spend that last hour with? Who would you spend that last hour talking to? Who would you apologize to? Who would you ask forgiveness from? Would you take your relationship and your walk with God more serious if I knew I only had an hour left? So many of us are like, man, I'll serve God tomorrow. I'll, I'll serve tomorrow. I'll give my life to God tomorrow. I'll be nice. I'll call my mom tomorrow. I'll call my husband tomorrow, like, tomorrow if there's like this or whatever, or my dad or whatever, right? And it's like tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. But what if it doesn't come? What if this is it? Like, how would I live differently? I'll tell you, I would probably be more kind to the people around me, I would probably be a little more patient with them and maybe not so patient with time. I'd want to say everything that needed to be said. I'd want to give every hug that I could possibly give. I'd want to spend more time in prayer. I'd want to make sure that I've surrendered it all to Jesus in those last moments. My life, if I knew I only had one hour left, would be completely different than the way many of us spend our lives every day. The reality is we don't know what even tomorrow brings. And that's why today's a gift. This isn't a doom and gloom, like, oh, I gotta be afraid. I don't know if I'm gonna make it tomorrow. It's like, God, you gave me the gift of this hour. How am I going to spend it? What am I gonna do with it? It's a tremendous gift. How am I gonna be a blessing to the people around me? In, in, in my singleness, how am I gonna embrace this season for good in my last, in my last hour, in my marriage? How am I gonna, man, how am I gonna show love to my wife or my husband that I've never had in my life? How am I going to bring my kids closer? You see, you can't truly value relationships until you learn to value time because you'll mistreat what you don't value. And this is why we put relationships often on the back burner. And the reality is it is the second most important thing ever to every human being. God said the greatest two commandments are love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. God is number one, the most important relationship in your life. Do I have time for you, God? Or do we live life like God created me for a relationship with him, but I'm too busy for it. And then the second relationship is people. Love your neighbor as yourself. It's this vertical relationship. And then there's this horizontal relationships. Nothing else is going to come with me. I've never seen a hearse. You guys know what a hearse is, right? It's a car that pulls a casket. Like I've never heard a, I've never seen a hearse towing a U-Haul. You ain't bringing all your stuff with you. And we sacrifice our families 
serving God, ministry, at the altars of career and money. If I've worked as a W-2, I spend my life living other people's dreams, building up their nest egg, making them rich at the sacrifice of what God has entrusted to me. This resonates deep. And yet time is important for things we value, things we don't take for granted. Look, when I go food shopping, are you guys going, you buy milk? You know you got to drink that cup of milk, right? Because if you don't, it curdles. Whoever tasted curdled milk? I have. It's disgusting. That thing is hot and it's sour. It's nasty. Like you're in a rush. I'm going to time clock. I'm going to buy this. I got seven days to drink it. And you guys know you check the date on that milk before you do it. Same thing with eggs. Then you go out and you buy garlic, onions, and potatoes. And you're like, before it sprouts, I got to eat it because Tic Tac said I would die if I don't eat it. If it starts growing things, it's no good. Got to eat it quick. Guys, bananas, right? Like I buy bananas and I got to eat them because if they turn like that, they're not even good for banana bread that dark anymore. And then these little bugs come from nowhere. Like where in the middle of winter, where do fruit flies come from? Do you know? Do they live in your house? And then when you throw that away, they're gone. Like they're ghosts. They're the only ghosts I've ever seen. Are these little fruit flies? Where do they come from? Where do they go? Who knows? And the worst is deli meats. You buy deli meats, you know you better not forget them in your refrigerator because it's going to smell like something died in there in about three weeks. Time gets really, really important. And we value time with things we don't take for granted. There's one food that we actually kind of do take for granted because it never spoils. Did you guys know honey never gets old? No matter how old honey is, it's still edible and it actually never decays. It's the craziest thing in your life. Go look it up. 1922, they dug up King, uh, King Tut's tomb. A lot of, that was a tongue twister there. King Tut's tomb, right? And what they found were, were like these bowls full of like 3,000 year old honey. And you know, they said it's still completely edible and good. Now looking at that, I'm like, I'm not gonna be the guy to figure that out, but I'm gonna believe him. Like, and, and the challenge is so many of us think of relationships like it's honey. Like, oh, it's there forever. My wife's not going nowhere. So I'll be kind later, I'll be kind tomorrow. God's not going nowhere. The church ain't going nowhere. My kids aren't going nowhere. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. We treat them like honey when in reality, your relationships are not like honey, they're more like onions. Turn to the person next to you and go, you're an onion. As long as you don't smell like an onion, you're good. <laughs> Time gets super important. And if you want to fulfill God's will for your life, it means prioritizing him and all of the relationships around you, whether you're married, dating, single, a child, a teenager, like God has given you significant relationships. And if you want to win in your relationships, there has to be some sort of a shift and a change in our lives because the whole world, the wisdom of the world, the spirit of the antichrist, the philosophies of the world, the culture of the world is saying, just jump relationship to the relationship, hook up culture. It doesn't really matter. Chase your heart and your dreams. You know, people chase their hearts into debt. Oh, it would make me happy to buy that. Well, live that philosophy long enough, you'll be going bankrupt. The heart is wretched, scripture says, above all things. Christians don't follow their hearts, they follow God. I don't follow my heart, I follow his word. Because my heart, the flesh, and everything in me and you wars against the truth and the knowledge of God. We desire sin. We desire easy, and walking with Jesus isn't always easy. It will cost you something. It will always Cost you something. And in return, God never takes out of your hands something without putting something greater in your hands. And that's the truth. That's why when I give to God, sacrifice something, say no to sin and say yes to Jesus, I know that whatever it is I think I need, he's gonna give it to me more in abundance and it's gonna be holy and pleasing in his sight. So what do you gotta do? You gotta hold out and you dig into relationship. I invite relationship and in. accountability. Iron sharpens iron. I call brothers in this church to hold me accountable and I hold them accountable. Because the devil's favorite type of Christian is an isolated, lonely Christian. Why? Because then you get stuck in your own thoughts. And that's the battleground of the enemy. If you want to win in relationships, this is in your app. Take notes. Notes are there anyway. If I want to win, it means I have to give my relationships my time. I have to give my relationships my energy. I have to give my relationships my focus. I have to give my relationships the priority that it deserves. It means I have to give my relationships sacrifice and I have to give it my humility and my best effort. If you're not giving that to your relationships, what you should expect is your relationships not to be blessed. Because we give God seeds, to, we sow them in our relationships. And the hope is God would bless us. And again, God created you for relationships. He's entrusted to you that you and I are too busy to enjoy, and it robs us. Ephesians 5, 15, 17 says this. Look carefully, say carefully. 
than how you walk, not as the unwise, but the wise. So what does a wise, God-fearing man or woman do? I look at the way I live my life. Look carefully how I walk. Look carefully at how I live. Look carefully at my schedule. Look carefully at how I invest my time or I waste my time. Look carefully at my time as, for me, as a pastor, as a husband, as a father, as a friend. Like, how am I investing my time? So if I'm wise, I'm gonna look carefully at that. A foolish person does not look carefully at their time. They live like the wind blown about in the world and you're constantly busy, constantly busy. And then it says this, make the best use of the time because the days are evil. So what do Christians do? We look carefully at the way we live our lives and we make the best use of the time God gave us. We don't waste our time, we make the best use of it. And then scripture goes on, therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is for your life. So to truly value time, only then we really truly start to value relationships and what's most important. If I don't start to value time, I can't value relationship. If I don't value time, I don't value what God's called me to. I have a finite period of time. If this was it, one hour, am I gonna spend this one hour doing what God has called us to do? Bill Keane was a famous cartoonist and this is what he said. He said, yesterday was the past, tomorrow's the future, today is a gift. And that's why it's called the presence. You see, the greatest gift you will ever give your family, the greatest gift you will ever give your relationships, the people in your life is time. That's all your kids want. You don't wanna be remembered with your spouse, your children, your friends, your boyfriend, girlfriend. You don't wanna be remembered for your absence. You want to be remembered for your presence. When I think of my life with my wife and kids, I want them to think and remember, dad is always present. When I have a need, he's there. When something's broken, he's gonna fix it. When I'm crying, he's my shoulder. When I'm celebrating, he's gonna lift me up. I wanna be remembered for my presence, not my absence. Busyness will take all of that away from you in your life. It's a time sucker. And if we think about time like money, how many of you would allow people just and things to just waste your money? We, we would never do that. How you spend your time is more important than how you spend your money. And we would never entrust our money to people to spend foolishly, and yet we don't steward our time well. And if you want to fulfill God's plan for your life in your marriage and in your relationships and in your singleness, you're going to start to realize this is the most important thing that I need to think about often is time because God has given me a window, a window. And you know, this window is really important if you guys have lost loved ones in your life. Some of us have experienced recent losses. Some of us are dealing with loved ones who have diseases, cancers, terminal issues. And we realize this is important. You know when time really got important to me? When my grandfather passed away. And I thought, man, I wish I would have spent a little more time with him. I wish I didn't always have an excuse why I couldn't drive out to Michigan to visit him. Man, it's a thousand miles away. That was always my excuse and surely a thousand miles limits. But I could have made time. I could have made more time. Why? Because it matters. Instead, I allowed busyness to steal opportunity. And so many of us allow busyness to steal opportunity. Let's take a deep dive into the most at-risk relationship in society today, and it's marriages. You know, there's been recent studies over the last 20, 30 years that all indicate the same thing, that more than 50% of all marriages in the United States will end in divorce. It was like 53.5%. That's crazy, but it's actually not the whole picture. But let me tell you what's happening in the last uh, three years. In the last three years, divorce rates are actually going down. So we would think at face value, that's a wonderful thing, but it's actually not. Less and less people are choosing to get married and more and more people are choosing to cohabitate. And when you cohabitate, all the data uh, basically shows us you will follow your heart and you're gonna run to relationship that feels like it works until it doesn't. And then you're gonna get out of that and you're gonna go to the next relationship, the next relationship, the next relationship. and, And it won't be long before you feel completely empty inside because you give a little bit of your heart and your soul away to every little relationship that you've been in. And if the relationship is only a a finite period of time and you move on to the next, you've given it away. But God's design for relationships, marriage and friendships is long-term commitments, long-term commitments. 
You know, so many of us are like, oh, you know, I love you. You're amazing until you show your humanity. And then when you let me down, I need to take a step away from you. I need time in this relationship. When you take a step away from someone, what you do is you take a step into isolation. Where scripture says to bear in there with one another, to be patient with one another, as Christ is patient with us. And see, that's where healthy relationships are forged. They're forged through a commitment, a covenant I've made between myself and God and you. See, at the center of every Christ-centered relationship is Jesus. That's the glue that binds us together. It's the glue that allows for grace to go both ways, mercy to go both ways. It allows us to hold each other accountable. But when we do it in the eyes of the world, we surround ourselves, the world teaches you, surround yourself with yes people. And when people tell you what you want to hear, they're good friends. And the moment somebody challenges you, we turn our back and walk away. You can't serve God with that level of pride and narcissism. You can't. We have a finite period of time. I want relationships to do what God intended them to do in my life and in your life, which is to help me grow. So so less and less people are getting married. But here's the, as you take an even a deeper dive, the most at-risk relationships are relationships that are not Christ-centered. So they did a a study just on uh, people who identify themselves as Christian. And I don't mean by label. I mean by action. Because there's a difference between being a follower of Jesus and a fan of Jesus. So this is a populace that says, hey, we go to church regularly, whether online or in person, and we serve in our community. So it's people that are bearing fruit. So we know a tree, right? But fruit it bears. And, and what, they, what they realized is that the divorce rate amongst committed Christians is actually 20 to 25%. National average is 50 right now. Christians is half of that. And people who are super committed, there was even a subpopulace even in that. People who are going and serving regularly. Something about a couple that prays together and serves together. That was like the the secret sauce. It actually brought divorce rates down to single digits. Could you imagine that? If I follow Christ, I'm less at risk than the population if our our marriage or our friendship does that. And then if we're like super committed and we pray together and serve together, Breakups go down to single digits? Why is that? Because the power of the Holy Spirit is on that relationship. That's one. And the second is, when you're following the Lord, your values are different. We talked about divorce in our marriage. Say that louder. It was never an option. I became a believer, follower of Jesus, like right before we got married. And I, and I asked her to marry me and she was like, okay. <laughs> it wasn't this big thing, right? <laughs> She wasn't following Jesus at the time, crazy circumstances. God did this amazing miracle. And I told her, I said, but if you marry me, understand one thing. I'm not going nowhere. You can never get rid of me. And if you try, I will buy a camper and I'm going to park out in your uh, uh, driveway. And I am not, you can't keep me from my kids. It's not happening. And you can't keep me from you. And God forbid you get remarried. I will stalk that man for the rest of my life. (laughs) Not beyond me. It never came up once. And marriage hasn't always been easy, right? Have I been easy to live with? You can be honest. No. She's like, no. no. Why? Because it's two human beings. So how does a good relationship work? Put, put, put the marriage idea on the, on, on the shelf for a minute. How does a good relationship work? It, it's two really good forgivers. That's what it is. It's two people that get together and say, hey, I'm committed to you and our friendship. And you ain't going nowhere and neither am I. And you know what? You can say the hard things to me and I'm going to say them to you. And that's the secret sauce to healthy relationships. But you don't even get there to the blessing of relationship in marriage, in a dating relationship, fiance, in your singleness with friends, right? Like you don't even get there until you start to value this. Every moment. You know, as I started working on this message, it got really convicting for me because I realized that the average male lives to 75 years old. 75. I'm I'm 44. That means I have 31 years left, 31 years left. And when I worked that out, I figured out that it was 11,315 like days left of my life. That's what I have, 11,315 days left of my life. And that's not even the whole story because there's this thing called sleep and I sleep for about eight hours a day. And when you subtract your sleep because it's not my productive time of the day, might be my self-care time, but it's not my productive time, It actually takes away 2,920 days of my life. I am so lazy. I'm going to spend in the next 31 years, I'm going to spend eight years sleeping. And you are all probably as lazy as me. You're going to do that as well. And that's not even the whole story because that brings me down to 8,395 days left of my life. Let's assume no craziness happens, right? Some tragedy, which could happen. And if it does, God's still good. But the reality is that's what I got. But then I work and you guys work. Some of us work eight hour days. If you work eight hour days, that takes away from you 
2,920 days of your life. You actually lose eight hours of your life to sleeping, eight hours, eight years of your life to sleeping, and you, you, you lose eight years of your life to work. And then you do that math, and I realize I only have 2,920 days left that are uninterrupted. I literally have eight years of my life that are completely free. And what am I going to do with it? What am I going to do with that limited amount of time? And when you start to realize things, it starts to put things into perspective because, man, for these eight years that I'm going to have uninterrupted, I want to leave it on the field for Jesus. I want to show up for that relationship and I want to serve God and give him my whole heart. When I think about my wife and my kids, like, I don't want to be half in. I want to give them my whole heart and my whole being. When I think of the church, I want to serve you guys with my whole heart and my whole being. Why? Because I only have 2,920 Days left to do it. Have you considered how much time you have left to do it? How would things be different if you live that way, with that acknowledgement, that's what what you have? What I will not do any more going further is time suckers. If I got 2,920 days left to live and you accumulate all the hours we spent on TikTok and Instagram, just swipe to the left and it'll tell you how long you've been on social media. If you got Apple, if you don't have Apple, I'm praying for you. Um, (laughs) Swipe to the left. And you realize three hours today, four hours tomorrow, man, I've wasted a whole day this week. You start doing the math on that, you will lose years of your life to social media. And it's not bad. It might be bad stewardship, the amount that you spend on it. And it's taking time away from your kids. You lose time sleeping. You lose time building somebody else's dream and nest egg, working from them. And yes, the word of God says to work as unto the Lord and you should work faithfully at work, but don't, man, don't, don't sacrifice your family and your kids at the altar of a career. Don't sacrifice God's call for your life at the altar of money. Don't sacrifice it all at the altar of busyness. Busyness is idolatry. What is idolatry? It's when anything else or anyone else comes to the center of your life and Jesus gets pushed to the margins. That's what it is. And we sacrifice so much for busyness and we have to learn the art of turning our phones off or putting them in the other room because here's the data. We spend more time looking at a screen than we do another human being's face. We spend more time listening to our phones than we do listening to the people in our lives and relationships. We spend more time with our phones than we spend with people. What is it costing you? What is the busyness of your life costing you? Because this is what we got. It's this amount of time. Am I gonna spend it with things that really matter? God, you created us for a life we're too busy for. You created us for relationships we're too busy for. I gotta do devotions. Well, I'm busy. God will understand. Man, I gotta serve. I have this great opportunity. I gotta understand. I'll do it. I'll do it next month. Impact ministry at Fusion Church. It happens every month. I'll sign up next month. Yeah, you're gonna defer it next month to lose your blessing this month. I'll serve to lose your blessing now if you serve later. Now, you have today. This is what you have. You have this hour left of your life. Who and what are you gonna spend it with? How are you gonna invest that time? A life well lived is a life surrendered to Jesus. A life where you are enriching someone else's life. A life where you're contributing to God's will for humanity, his kingdom, Kingdom kingdom-minded people. A life where you are enjoying your relationships. And if you're not enjoying your relationships, you need to look at your time and you need to look at the way you spend your time. Remember what scripture teaches us, right? It tells us to carefully look that a believer, a wise person carefully looks at the way they spend their time, making the best use of it. Make the best use of it. You only have so much of it. And so many of us have a minimalistic mentality. What's the amount of time I need to spend with the kids? How much time do I need to spend with my spouse? How many times a month do I need to call my parents? Like like we have all this, what's the minimal? And our standard is the bare minimum, very often for relationships. What would happen if we turned that around? What would happen if I gave my wife more of my time? If I gave God more of my time? If I gave the church more of my time? My kids, my relationships, my friendship. What could happen? What would go right in my life if I just gave more? It's a push and a pull. Our instincts in our society says, push relationships, settle for distractions. Push, pull. 
What we maybe need to do is flip that around. I need to pull relationships and push away distractions in my life. What would go right if we change our perspective? This is why I'm on my, my young adults. I have two in college. And I'm like, yo, you need to call me every day or text me every day. I know y'all are like, yo, you're so needy. Yeah, maybe I'm a little needy, right? But it's because I understand my kids are in a season. And I only have so much time to hear their voice in this season that they're in. And I'm going to blink and they're going to be out of college. And I'm going to blink and they're going to be married. And I'm going to blink and I'm going to have grandkids and that's going to be great. But I never get this moment back. I don't want to be happy tomorrow in a relationship. I want to be happy today. I want to, be, I want to leverage that relationship for God's glory in my life and in their life. So, so what do I need to do? Here's some practical steps. Just a couple. You've you got to be able to push the distractions away in your life. Look, the skills of relationships will come starting next week but I would do violence to you. I know you guys are like, Pastor, you're so dramatic. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little extra sometimes, right? Like it would be literally deceiving you to say, here's some skills, but no foundation. Because to do the skills right, you need to give this. So, so, so what do I gotta do? I gotta push the distractions away. I gotta be willing to do that. Second thing I need to do is I need to schedule time to fulfill God's purpose for my life. You were created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared for you in advance. God prepared a life for you to live that you should not be too busy for. It should be your priority. So I need to schedule that. Time with God regularly. Time serving at the church. Time serving in the community. Look, time serving your coworkers. You're a Christian and a missionary, whether you're doing it in church, in your community, or at your workplace. You don't have to be a pastor. You're already in ministry. You just don't realize it. You're a minister of the word of God by the way you live your life. Make time for that. Schedule that. I have to schedule time with people I love and care about. My wife, my kids, my friends, you guys, like, you, you know, you guys are family. What good would it be if I just preached to you every Sunday, but I had no real relationship with you? It's not God's plan. This church isn't mine. I'm part of the church. I just have one specific job to do, but we're family. We're doing this together. God called us to be the hands and feet. God called us to walk together, to serve together, to experience joy together, to celebrate together. And when there's pain, we grieve together. We're in this together. And we gotta make time for it. Otherwise, we're always gonna be sitting here like, God, I want more in my life. God, what's the purpose of my life? God, why am I created? I wanna be part of something greater and bigger than myself. And God's like, stop wasting time and plug in. It's about this. I'm preaching long, I can tell. Remember what idolatry is. It's when something or someone else comes to the center of your life and pushes Jesus to the margin. For some of us, your heart, maybe you don't, you don't need to change your career, but you need to change your heart about your career or about a sin issue or about whatever it is that's getting in the way of you giving God your best, which is showing up. Giving your wife and your kids and your husband and your, your friends your best and in your singleness, your got relationships here in this church, giving it your best. Because this season isn't forever. We don't even know how long they're gonna last. We have time. What are you gonna do right now? How are you gonna spend the rest of your day? The worst thing you can do is walk out of here today going, oh, that was a great message, I'm inspired. Guys, don't do that to yourselves. Please don't do that to yourselves. Ask Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what must I change so that I can value that better? I don't wanna walk away the same way I walked in. I want you to make me different. And when you pray that prayer, he makes you different every time because you've humbled yourself before him. This is what... Psalm, as we wrap down our message today, Psalm 90, 12 says this. Teach us, speaking of God, teach us to number our days. Teach us to understand this. Teach us to understand that we're not guaranteed this. We don't even know how long this is gonna last. And then it says this, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. So to understand this means I'm wise. To ignore this means I'm foolish. To ignore this means I'm gonna mistreat my marriage. Your fiance, your friends, your parents. To not understand this is to not understand relationship. To not value this is not to value relationship. To ignore this is to ignore God's calling in your life because you'll always say there's tomorrow. And God is like, leave it on the field for me. Give them everything you got. Serve like you never served before. Give like you never gave before. Surrender like you never surrendered before. Show up for that relationship like you never did before. I placed you there to be a blessing to the people around you. And yes, believers, I'm speaking to just believers right now. There are people in your life that don't know Jesus. Your friends, your family, your kids. Be a light. Be the salt. 
Bring them hope. Serve them well. Because every one of us in here who do know God, who made that surrender decision, it's because somebody ministered to you. Somebody invited you to sit at the table of Jesus. Guys, there's no time to waste. You go on TikTok, right now, apparently we're in World War III. If you watch TikTok, that's what it says. I don't know if that's true. But it doesn't matter what tomorrow has. Because tomorrow's in God's hands. But he's entrusted today to your hands. What are you gonna do with what God's entrusted to you? Guys, don't waste it anymore. Life's too short. Relationships are too short. Right now is what matters. Where you're at with God right now is what matters. Where you're at in your relationships right now is what matters. And for some of this, this is gonna be a time of redirection. God, I need to bring my life back into alignment with you. Forgive me for the mistreatment of my relationships. For others, it's gonna be God. I need you. And that's where it starts. It starts with you, God. Because something amazing happened in my relationships that when Jesus is at the center, it's all blessed. I had somebody many times in my life, they say, Pastor, or Armando, right? If they don't know I'm a pastor, they're like, you are like the most blessed person in the world. I wanna be like you. I'm like, no, you don't. Because I don't wanna be like me. I wanna be like him. And I says, it's all because of him. I serve him. I honor him. And when I fall short, the Holy Spirit picks me up. But he's my focus. He's my center. And if you seek first the kingdom of God, scripture says, everything else, say everything. Everything else will follow. You want blessing in your life? Understand this. It's gonna help you to understand this. I wanna pray with you. If you guys would just close your eyes and just let the Holy Spirit in. Some of you, you need to have a conversation with God right now. Would you have that in your own heart and mind? Maybe it's a sorry. Maybe it's a help me. Maybe it's a, a surrender. Some of us have mistreated time and because we've mistreated time, we've mistreated relationships. God, forgive us. We've all done it. But help us to live your way, God. Help us to do it God's way. If you're here today and you're like, man, I just gotta get it right with God. I've been far from God. I've been distant, confused, and I just need, I need God in my life. If that's you, would you, as an act of faith, just put your hand up and say, God, that's me. God, that's me. If that's you, I see your hand. Anyone else? Just need Jesus, need that relationship, that forgiveness. If that's you, just slip your hand up and say, that's me. There you go. I see you. Father God, I thank you, Jesus. Lord God, would you bless our walk with you? Would you give us a new fire for you, a new desire for you, a hunger for you like we've never known so that we can fill up again, Lord God, that fresh oil and bring it to the relationships you've called us to be a blessing to? Lord God, may we start making time and prioritizing time for what it is. It's a gift from you, God. May we not mistreat it. May we steward it well. Holy Spirit, lead us, I pray, and bless your people. In your name, Christ Jesus. Amen. I really hope that you enjoyed that content. My name is Pastor Armando. I want you to do two things. I want you to subscribe to our channel. Make sure you guys go ahead and do that and enjoy more relevant content on the stuff of life that we talk about here at Fusion Church. Second thing is check out our website, www.fusionchurchny.com. Continue to dive into our content and our online community and let's grow together.